Welcome to our CCPS Science Review Lab. I have a question for you. Suppose I were to ask you to think about properties of matter. We've worked on these for years. You could maybe talk about some of the physical properties. Those are the things that you can observe or measure um, without changing the substance at all. Maybe you can talk to me about its appearance or its color, its odor, maybe its density or its magnetism. Or maybe you're going to talk to me about the chemical properties of matter. And those are things, uh, things that you can measure or observe, but you have to change the matter itself. So if you were going to burn it or see how reactive it was with certain chemicals, those are all properties or ways of describing matter. When we look at stars, we have ways of describing those as well. So we can think about what we're working on today is the properties of stars. Let's first talk about apparent magnitude. In my first illustration, I've pointed out two stars. In this box here that I've labeled A, I'm talking about this super bright looking star right here. And over here in this box I labeled B, I'm talking about this seemingly little guy right here. Now you'll notice I said seemingly little guy. When we're talking about apparent magnitude, that is the brightness or the luminosity of a star from where we are sitting here on Earth. Okay, so the, the star with the greater apparent magnitude is star A. In reality, that star may just be closer to us, so therefore it may look brighter. But it's a, so that is its apparent magnitude. It's how it looked. Doesn't matter if you were standing on it and you measured its brightness, how bright it really is. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about how it looks from Earth. Apparent magnitude. Now, another property that we may look at when we talk about stars is their size. Stars in general are pretty huge. I mean, think about the size of our sun. It's hard to wrap our head around exactly how big our sun is. I and mean, we know we could fit a million of our Earths inside it. That's, I can't even wrap my head around that. So when we start talking about stars that are even larger than our sun, we've got to do something to sort of get it in perspective. One of those things that we're going to do is we've, scientists have come up with another new way of measuring things. And the unit of measure is called a solar mass. When we're talking about stars and we're comparing them to our sun, we say that a star that is about the same size as our sun is one solar mass. Now, if you look at this blue-white supergiant I have up on my screen, that's about 150 times the size of our sun. That makes it 150 solar masses. So again, another property is size, and when we look at that, we're going to talk about it in terms of solar mass. There are other properties that we can use to describe stars. We can talk about their absolute magnitude. That's the brightness that if you went up to them and you looked at them, just like you do at a light bulb, when it's right up close and you were to read the measurements of how many watts and tells you how bright that light bulb is right there. That's what absolute magnitude is, how bright those stars are at the actual star. We can talk about the color of a star. You see we have blue stars and we have red stars and white stars and the color is dependent upon the temperature. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is show me what you know. Look at this chart describing main sequence stars. That's the category that the majority of stars fall into. Which type of star are you seeing as the hottest? Which has the greatest apparent magnitude? Which is the most massive or the biggest? Show me what you know.